So, question two, what do you do if your counselor isn't helpful? Well, Fire them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to start by saying, and this is something that it's a lifelong journey that if we feel like we are not being provided with what we need, we have to take a step back and ask, are we making our needs apparent mm -hmm. to whoever or whatever we are asking, you know, so <laughs> to get real deep. Um, <laughs> but so honestly, I think the first question you have to ask yourself is, you know, have I been asking questions? Have I been engaging with my counselor or are they just going through the motions of, you know, the cut and dried boilerplate, like, here is what I offer to you. You have to really think about, well, why do you feel like they're not helpful? What are they not giving to you that you're seeking? And, and how can you talk to them about it? And not everybody, you know, is, is confident in that way that they can very clearly state their needs. Um, but I think it's something that we can all work on. I think just different methods of communication too. Uh, mm -hmm. Not everybody's comfortable coming up and talking. Sure. So even if you have just your counselor's email or I don't know how personal people get with their, <laughs> their cell phone numbers. Snapchat. Their, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but there are alternative methods to go around, especially if you're not the kind of person that wants to just take a stroll down to the guidance counselor's office, yeah. sit down in the chair and say, hey, I'm not right. getting what I need. Right. So definitely make sure that uh, you know what you want and also what's the best way to deliver your message. Sure. Yeah. I think also um, when I was in admissions, I visited like dozens and dozens of high schools every year. And so I was in a lot of different guidance offices. Um, and there are a lot of resources that you can use in there that aren't the people necessarily. Mm -hmm. So even if maybe your conversation isn't great or if you're nervous and like don't want to go talk one-on-one, -on -one, even if you sort of walk in, greet whoever is like the guidance secretary or whoever's in there, they can a lot of times point you toward like scholarship information mm -hmm. or information about colleges or information about scheduling classes. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of things surrounding the counselor's office that aren't necessarily just talking to them. That's true. I remember in high school, a lot of kids expected their counselors to kind of, like, they would go in there not knowing what they want to do, not knowing where they want to go, expecting their counselors to kind of put them on the right path, and I think that's a lot to ask. They're not a life person. coach. <laughs> so definitely, like, do your research, yeah. like Abby was saying, before you go to meet with them. Like, have specific questions laid out that you want to ask them. Like, use your time wisely with them, because you might only have 10 minutes to meet with them, mm. so you don't want to be like, hi. I'm applying to college, what mm -hmm. do I do? <laughs> and if like, part of the reason it feels like they're not helpful is because your meetings are brief. Like Tyler said, I mean, email is a great way to bullet out any questions that you have that you didn't get to touch on in your meeting. Um, and that way, you know, they can get back to you when they have time with specific answers that are maybe, you know, a little bit more robust than your conversation was. Um, or try asking if you can have a longer appointment, mm -hmm. maybe scheduling off like a half an hour, 45 mm -hmm. minutes to meet with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think also the the question of what do you do if your counselor isn't helpful? There are people out there that just go in, punch in nine to five and they leave, that's for every job. <laughs> so if, if you have a counselor that is just not, uh, and maybe it's not even just that, maybe it's you just, you guys don't get along, you don't see eye the eye on certain don't things. Jive. <laughs> right. Um, take, take that opportunity to one, usually, and this could not be the case for you, but the guidance counselors were broken up by the last name in my high school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you kind of fit in that alphabet alphabetical <laughs> first try. <Yeah. laughs> um, so you're able to jump to another counselor as long as you talk through and say, hey, it's just not not really jiving. As <laughs> Abby said. So take that opportunity to do that. Uh, again, if it's only one guidance counselor for the school, if you're a really small school, uh, whatever teacher you link up most with, mm -hmm. uh, the teacher definitely has the experience in the past of where if they've gone to school what they've done uh, students that have gone past them and uh, so use their expertise also so if you go to the guidance counselor they only give you 10 minutes and you don't really have that much time you might have something in those 10 minutes that get brought up where oh I really want to know more about that you can then go over to one of your favorite teachers a coach uh, your parents even it doesn't really matter uh, older brother or sister that has gone through the process too and they can further explain that 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 bit of information that you want to know more about. Mm -hmm. um, if the guidance counselor is really not doing their job, I joke, <laughs> fire them. Uh, you should probably bring up a complaint <laughs> uh, and just let them know yeah. that uh, things are not working out. Other students might be experiencing the same thing. And Mackenzie mentioned earlier, you don't 
really some people don't know about the guidance counselor process until junior year. Mm -hmm. So if they've never reached out to anybody until junior year and mm -hmm. then it's like, oh, hey, make sure you hit this punch list. Right. That's probably not the best experience for mm -hmm. any student. So that's just something to keep in mind. I think I a lot of, oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people are also hiring like outside help too. Uh, mm -hmm. Their kids, they think maybe need more guidance or maybe they just don't know what to do and they need someone else that College can like focus more on them. Yeah, well, that's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> um, so maybe ask your parents if you can look into doing that and they can provide a little bit more help and a little more specific help for you if you're looking yeah. at going to a specific program or going to a school that you want. They can probably help you more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously there's budgetary considerations there, but mm -hmm. it could be extremely helpful, especially if your school is just short on counselors and short on time um, to dedicate to you if it's an option it'd be a cool thing um, but again most of the time you can find resources within your school that are free you know taxes notwithstanding um, <laughs> <laughs> but even teachers I mean one of my English teachers was one of my biggest supporters and the most helpful to me I mean she was you know, an English major, she went to Northeastern, she pretty much played out college the way that I wanted to. Um, and it helped that she wasn't, you know, too far out of grad school, so the age difference didn't feel like that much. I felt like I could confide in her. Um, so she was actually more memorable in that process for me than my guidance counselor was. Mm -hmm. So if there's a teacher that you like or liked in previous years, you can even go to them. I mean, they all had to go to college in order to teach you, so they have at least some facet of information that they can provide. You can also do research to see what schools like teachers run to, and if like maybe there's a school you're interested in mm -hmm. that a teacher went to. Like my friend wanted to go to Clemson, and this teacher graduated from there, so she connected with that teacher to see you know how they got accepted. Maybe if they could reach out to the school on their behalf, and she provided a lot of guidance with her that way. Mm -hmm. That was free. <laughs> <laughs> I think also, um, once you're at the point where you're looking at specific colleges and stuff like that, um, the admission counselors, again, which I keep going back to because I know about them. <laughs> um, bragger. But like, <laughs> admission counselors obviously like work at a specific school and are the experts on that. But a lot of times, especially if you're like between majors or you kind of know vaguely what you want to study in college, but you aren't sure. Um, they're a really good resource for that too because they've seen tons of other students like you who mm. have similar interests and can kind of give you paths right. or else they might say like there's a school down the road that might be better fit right. for you um, and so that's also helpful. Yeah.